Thank you for joining me again for the last, finishing up the last chapters of Ecclesiastes. These are chapters 9 through 12. This is day 193 for Saturday, Saturday July 11th, 2020. There is still more wisdom to be had from the teacher, from King Solomon, and I have a lot of little small snippets for us, and we will have a closing summary there at the end of Ecclesiastes given from the teacher himself. So Ecclesiastes 9.3 says, This is an evil in all that happens under the sun, that the same fate comes to everyone. So again, we talked last time about this divine sense of justice and unfortunately every you know whether you do good or bad you end in the same fate and so the teacher is lamenting that this is an evil in his eyes in verse 5 it says the living know that they will die but the dead know nothing they have no reward and even the memory of them is lost this is, I think, a reminder of you know, how um, that our legacy is lived on through the people that we interact with and touch and the lives that we make a difference with. Um, and then also, too, our wisdom kind of stays with us, right? We can't take it with us, our possessions, our wealth, um, even our relationships that um, our essence, you know, may uh continue on in some way shape or form in an afterlife but at the same time our knowledge will not be imparted on to those who are still living so it's a reminder to live our life and to just be able to you know, try and educate while you can share to mentor to to pass on our information as well too Maybe even in a video recording like I'm trying to do here, that you can find some wisdom through what I'm saying. In Ecclesiastes 9, verses 7, it says, Go eat your bread with enjoyment and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has long ago approved what you do. So this mentality is you know, kind of the idea that God knows all the steps that you will take, all the actions that you will do, and God essentially allows for you to do that because you're able to do them. So this idea is that do what you feel called to do. Do what's within your heart, what you're going to do anyways, to go and eat your bread with enjoyment and drink your wine with a merry heart. Don't get so hung up or caught up on trying to perfect your life, or pursue money too much to your detriment. Know that this life is called for you to live it. So enjoy that. Get to be connected with those um, and learn the gift of giving in which you will receive much more back when you give. So there's also an interesting thought in the afterlife. Here it references Sheol or the place of the dead for the Hebrew tradition. And so in verses 9 through 10 of chapter 9, it says, Enjoy life with the wife whom you love, all the days of your vain life that you are given under the sun, because that is your portion in life and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do with your might. For there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol to which you are going. So remember, Sheol is this place connected with darkness and suffering. It's connected with the pit and the grave. In Numbers chapter 16, verse 30, it says, If the Lord creates something new, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them up, with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into Sheol, then you shall know that these men have despised the Lord. So this is... Uh, um, there, as uh, Moses is interacting with the people who are very treacherous towards him, but the idea is that uh, Sheol is underneath the ground. So physically, when you die and are buried, then you, in some sense, are uh, go down into Sheol. So that's kind of the, 
the imagery, the afterlife mentality that they have here in this uh, tradition, and the teacher is very much in that. It's different than our Christian tradition, talking about heaven and Jesus and the second coming, so it's important to be aware of those differences on the afterlife. Ecclesiastes 10 in verse uh, 1 says, Dead flies make the perfumer's ointment give off a foul odor, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. Similarly, in verse 12, words spoken by the wise bring them favor, but the lips of fools consume them. So this is another example of avoiding folly, of saying what seems wise, of you know choosing to... Um, just be very intentional about what you uh, say and what you speak. It, it, with a little folly, you know, it can subvert your message that you're trying to say. You know, when, especially, you know, as it uh, will reference here, is that when you critique somebody else, it is something that can be a detriment as well. So in verse uh, 20, it says this, uh, of your speaking in chapter 10. Do not curse the king even in your thoughts, or curse the rich even in your bedroom, for a bird of the air may carry away your voice, or some winged creature tell the matter. So I don't know that birds are going to say it, but necessarily uh, you never know what people hear and what they hear you saying. So be intentional about spreading truth, not rumors. Be intentional about you know, how you interact with other individuals to sow words and life and peace. And when, you know, that doesn't mean that if somebody does something wrong to you, you can't go address that. You are called to address that um, as the Spirit motivates you. But at the same time, too, if you have a problem with somebody, don't go gossiping to somebody else. You know, talk to that person directly. Don't you know, state your problem and then try and put on a smiley face um, to pretend like, you know, that you're best of friends with this individual. Yeah, be honest. Honesty is the best policy. So in Ecclesiastes 11, I selected verse 2, which says, Divide your means seven ways or even eight, for you do not know what disaster might happen on earth. It's funny because I think in the, the financial realm, there's this idea of diversifying your wealth, your portfolio to avoid losing everything. So this is the, uh, you know, just the idea that the more that you are able to, uh, yeah, have, have your, I guess, um, the more that you give to different areas of life, the, if that area of life, you know, somehow experiences a loss, then you'll have other areas of life to kind of help out with that. So, you know, if you own cattle, you know, make sure that you have, uh, you know, something if, you know, something catastrophic happens to your cattle. It reminds me there in South Dakota, where a lot of the farmers experienced a flash freeze and it froze and killed a lot of the herds, you know, that they had there. And it was very devastating for that. So, Without some sort of backup plan or, you know, um, way to be able to provide resources for your life and for your family, it could be quite devastating. Then it goes on to uh, speak, and this kind of closes out the rest of Ecclesiastes, recommendations for youth. In verse 9, it says, Rejoice, young man, for while you are young. And let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Follow the inclination of your heart and the desire of your eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. So it's to say live life, to enjoy life, to enjoy the pleasures that God allows us to pursue. But know that fear of God is important in the midst of that too. You know, to not go off the deep end and to pursue pleasure, to pursue foolishness, to try and cheat your neighbor or take advantage of others. Um, it's still to do 
all of these God-given joyful things in life, um, but then to do that uh, with God in mind. In Ecclesiastes 12, I find it kind of depressing, actually. So it mentions, now, before the days of trouble come, really when you are older, and I think maybe this is kind of a metaphor for what's to come, the impending destruction of you know, Jerusalem and Israel, um, Israel and Judah, I should say, by Assyria and Babylon, that these kingdoms are going to experience suffering and destruction and pain. And so while they are in their youth, to celebrate life and enjoy what they have. But to close all of Ecclesiastes, we have a summary from the teacher himself, starting in verse 13, which says, The end of the matter, all that has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is what the whole duty of everyone. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So there it is. Fear God, keep his commandments, um, and this is what we're called to do. So this also means you can enjoy life within the boundaries, the safe boundaries that these commandments try and instruct. Remember, uh, commandments or instruction, uh, law even, typically has two functions. One is to preserve life, to create structures which promote life. And within those structures, you can do a whole bunch of different things. You can have freedom and liberty and enjoyment. At the same time, too, whenever you go beyond those boundaries and borders and you cross them, um, when you trespass them, that's when uh, consequences can happen that you may not even see or witness and it can lead to destruction. So I hope you're able to enjoy life. Know that life is a little bit more than vanity, I think, but at the same time, don't take yourself too seriously. God loves you. I love you and love yourself too.